All right, so this video is a supplemental video on the natural base E. This is something that is taught in Algebra 2. So you know special numbers, special numbers such as pi or i, imaginary numbers. Another special number is given by the letter E. That is called natural base E, also called the Euler number. After its discoverer, Leonard Euler. Now, this is the expression. 1 plus 1 divided by x to the x power. And here's what it looks like. Now, basically, what it says is this. As e, the expression, here it is. The expression approaches e as x increases, as shown in the graph. So we start at 0, 1. And the expression, which is given, approaches e, which is represented by this dotted line. So you're going to find out, as that expression approaches infinity, e is approximately 2.71. And here's what we get. If we plug in 10, we plug in 100. We plug in 10 to the third, and so on. You'll notice that this keeps getting closer and closer to the same value, which is e. So E is approximately this number right here, 2.71, 82, so on. E is irrational. As X approaches positive infinity, here's your expression. This expression approaches the value of E. So some really ex easy examples. If I asked you to simplify the expression, E to the third, Multiply by e to the 6. We follow the same rules of powers. We add the powers. This will give us e to the ninth. B. 16e to the 5th divided by 4e to the 4th. That would simplify into 4e because 5 minus 4 is 1. We're dividing same bases. And lastly, 3e to the negative 4x to the second power. We take 3 squared, we get 9. We multiply negative 4x times 2, we get e to the negative 8x, which we would then write as 9 divided by e to the 8x. Now, graphing the base. Here's what a, the graph looks like. A function that is in this form. You'll notice it kind of looks like an exponential function here. Which it is. A function of the form, here it is, is called a natural base function, exponential function. And you should notice because look at the base. The base is E, natural base. Now, when A is greater than 0, when A is greater than 0 and R is greater than 0, the function is exponential growth. Shoop, here we go. A is bigger than 0 and R is bigger than 0. When a is greater than 0 and r is less than 0, it's exponential decay. So here we go. y to the e to the positive x, exponential growth. y equals e to the negative x, exponential decay. So the question comes into play, what's going to happen when we graph these? y equals 3e to the x. And let's do f of x because, you know, that's part of what a function is. So f of x equals e to the negative one-half x. So as you can tell, this one right here is going to be exponential growth, and this one's going to be exponential decay. Honestly, what you'd still do is make a t-table. If I plug in x, let's plug in negative 2, negative 1, 0, and 1. We plug it in. All you do is just plug it into a calculator, e to the negative 2 power, multiply by 3, e to the negative 1 power multiplied by 3, we plug it in. We're going to get approximately 0 0.41 for negative 2, 1.1 for negative 1, 0, 0.3, and 1, 8.15. On the second one, if you follow the same value, let's plug in negative 4, negative 2, 0, and 2. Once again, you can plug in anything you want. These values will give you as follows. Once again, all you're doing is just plugging this into a calculator. You're taking e to whatever power you want. And then you just solve the function. So here's what this one would look like. 
exponential growth, and the exponential decay would look like this. That's it. It's an exponential growth function with the natural base E. Growth, decay. So, solving real life problems. You have already learned that the balance of an account earning compound interest is given, and then there's the function. As the frequency n of compounding approaches positive infinity, the compound interest formula approximates the following formula. Here it is. When interest is compounded continuously, the amount A in the account after t years is given by A equals the principal multiplied by E to the annual interest rate as a decimal multiplied by time. So I'm just going to put this example here for you. We can look over it. You and your friend each have accounts that earn annual interest compounded continuously. The balance A in dollars of your account is modeled by this function. The graph over here shows the balance of your friend's account over time. Which graph has the greatest principal or the greater principal? Which has the greatest balance after 10 years? Well, easily, the principal is where you start. Your friend has 4,000 bucks. You, looking up here, what's your initial value? 4,500. So easily, the first thing, which account has the greater principal? Your account starts with the greater principal. So we want to go after 10 years. So 10 years... There's 10 years. So it looks like your friend is approximately, I don't know, just a little over 7,000. So if we plug in 10 to your account, we plug in 10 right there. So that would give us 10 multiplied by 4 hundredths. And we take e to that power, multiply by 4,500. If you plug it into a calculator, you're going to get this amount right here. So you are going to have approximately $6,713. And your friend has approximately, it looks a little over, about like 7,200. So your friend's account has the greatest balance after 10 years. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the user number E. Pretty easy. It's just using your calculator and use an E in a formula.